Okay, if you've uh, just joined us, apologies for the break in the coverage. Seems that the uh, server went down. That's a message I'm getting on the uh, software. So I'm um, just wondering really whether to try and quickly edit the... I don't know what it was. Was it about final 15 minutes of the first half? I'd have to quickly do that because unfortunately with uh, the system... There's no way of actually forwarding or rewinding the video start. So I'm sure we uh, we all don't want to have to go back to the start when we've been enjoying the game. So um, I'm not sure whether to just go into the second half or quickly try and edit the uh, final 15 minutes or so of the first half. If you just bear with me a moment, I might just take some advice on that. So... Please bear with us. This is the problem of uh, trying to live stream from home. Okay, if you're uh, still with us, many apologies for that. Seems to be a server issue. It's just crashed, and uh, unfortunately, there's no way of just restarting it. Um, well, from where we left off, you have to start right from the beginning. There's no forward or rewind, unfortunately, so it would mean playing it right from the start. So I've just had a quick chat with a friend who suggests that we just go into the second half so what I'll do is I'll leave that a few minutes just going to put that out on social media and fingers crossed we um, have the full interrupted second half and anything that may be beyond that we've also got some post-match reaction as well 
and uh, we hear from supporters who were there. So again, many apologies for the problem. Uh, it is beyond our control. I've been monitoring it, but um, yeah, just for the first time since we've been doing some of the live streams from home, uh, the actual server let us down, it crashed, and uh, that uh, unfortunately cut the broadcast short. So we will shortly uh, get underway with the second half. What I'll do in the meantime, for those of you who joined us uh, late, we did have some uh, pre-match package with various images and the uh, We Can Build Our Dreams anthem from the time. So I'll play that and then uh, we'll get back underway in about five minutes' time.
Okay, so if you've uh, just joined us, apologies once again for the interruption in our live broadcast. Server crashed, apparently. First time it's happened while we're uh, doing these live for the afternoons. We've had several uh, successful broadcasts, but for the first time we have experienced some technical difficulties. So what we're going to do is, because it's not possible to just uh, start the video at the point that we uh, were up to we would have to start it again then we can go into the second half because that's a different video so hopefully that will also sort out the uh, sync issues unfortunately the video and audio out of sync in the first half as you've no doubt seen so uh, maybe that that improves in the uh, second half but apologies once again we are trying our best in very challenging circumstances at the moment so We'll now rejoin the commentator Martin Tyler with his summariser Andy Gray for the start of the second half at Old Trafford. England, no goals as yet here at Old Trafford. Middlesbrough down to 10 men. Kinder off in that first half for two bookable offences. Gary Pallister, these Chesterfield supporters are seriously thinking about Wembley. Do they have a right to do that? The team have earned what they've had so far, haven't they? Yeah, they started off really well. Chesterfield, we talked about the, the nerves that they might have before the game. Um, but in the first 10 minutes, I think it was Middlesbrough that were more nervous than Chesterfield. Had a couple of dangerous situations and uh, looked quite threatening. Then Middlesbrough settled, played some good football. And then they've had the knock now of the, of the man getting sent off. Hasn't helped, has it, Mark, the reorganisation? Yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, we struggled a little bit, you know, with the organisation, and, and especially now that once Kinder's gone. Um, but now I think Clayton Blackmore's come in and, and, and I'll settle down a little bit in the second half. You know, uh, I think the gaffer would have had a good word to the board. 45 and, minutes to sort it out. Yeah. There's been another goal at Roker Park, incidentally. Liverpool, remember, one up in the first half through Robbie Fowler. They're two up now. Steve McManaman has made it two for Liverpool at Roker Park. We wait the first goal here, match commentators Andy Gray and Martin Tyler. Thank you, Richard. Well, there's no doubt that Middlesbrough have the individual ability in the side to overcome the obvious disadvantage. But they know there are testing times ahead here at Old Trafford. It would be extra time, of course, if it's still level after 90 minutes. And there's Davis straight away dispossessing Emerson. Morris. And not the start to the second half that Brian Robson would have expected from his players. I can't believe Emerson did that. I honestly can't. I know he's a confident lad, but that bordered on the ridiculous right at the beginning of this second half. Davis with a long throw. Ravinelli getting underneath it. Williams, Morris, Holland. Howard trying to touch it off for Hewitt, but not doing it well enough, and it's brought out by Blackmore. And the Jules getting an early challenge in on Janino. Fleming. How much has been made of uh, Chesterfield's cup run, and uh, rightly so, but remember this is Middlesbrough's first FA Cup semi-final as well. We've talked a lot about Chesterfield, haven't we, since Mills we went to 10 men. Like, can they do it now? But I still think Brian Robson would have been stressing to his players at half time. All right, we are down to 10 men. But as I look around this dressing room, we surely would have been saying there's enough talent here that suggests to me if we keep it tight at the back and we're disciplined there, we can still create problems, we can still create chances, and I expect us to win the match. And I think they'd have been saying pretty much that. Muster. 
But there are already signs since the sending off that Chesterfield were able to get in touch a bit more in midfield, which they were finding very, very difficult 11 against 11. by Vickers, Hignett helping it on into a useful area Janino well, what a vital tackle that was given the nature of Janino's skills by Williams well, I sound like Janino, he just showed a little bit too much of it Blackmore biting it Two clubs were side by side in Division Three. Middlesbrough overcame really critical times in the mid 80s and rebuilt. And now their finances at a very high level. Chesterfield have pretty much stayed put. They operate within their budget. And just occasionally, something totally exceptional crosses their path. It was a League Cup victory against Middlesbrough back in the 80s that they remember at Saltergate. But here's Janino looking to spoil this semi-final for them here. Emerson. Well, in the end, he was going to run into some sort of contact. Well, he doesn't even think it's a free kick. I certainly, I think he nudges him out of the way. Yes, so I want it was worth for a moment what Dyche was doing, but he yeah. was walking out to suggest <laughs> they should uh, square up for a goal kick. But a free kick it is. Can Ravanelli produce something spectacular here? Can't get it past the head of Hewitt. The defending. Craig Hignett to take the corner, five minutes into the second half. And the ball is properly placed. And Festa lining up for a move towards the near post. Vickers going to that area as well, behind them Ravanelli and Morris for Chesterfield. One player they wouldn't have wanted to head it down to would have been Janino. Musto. Cut out by Perkins. There's even more atmosphere you sense in the second half with the respective sets of fans getting a better view of the attacking side of each team's play. Lovely work from Emerson. Oh, Janino tried to get in front of two, did get in front of two, but couldn't reach the ball. Brilliant work from Emerson. On from Davis. Musto. The long ball for Chesterfield comes from Curtis. Davis heading it on brilliantly. Howard's got a chance here. That might, just might, have been the chance that would have made John Howard. A hero and taking Chesterfield to this year's FA Cup final. That is a good chance. This is good a chance. Gets in behind Festa. He's got a clear shot at it. He's just unable to keep it down. He hits the target. He must surely have scored. Well, Davis put it into a perfect area for Howard to latch on to. It wasn't the perfect shot. 
Janinho. Here comes Chesterfield again with Jules. Davis wants it to feet. Middlesbrough getting players around the ball. Emerson off the head of Curtis. The spin away for Hewitt. Davis wanting it again, but Hewitt looks further forward for Morris. Now it goes to Kevin Davis. Just put off by Vickers initially. Emerson, who's trickery hasn't paid off this time. Hewitt can't get the cross in. No, we get away with that, but there's a time and place for flicking it about. Eight on the edge of your own box. In from Hewitt. Well, it's no exaggeration to say that Chesterfield had the opportunity here to make this the most famous FA Cup semi-final of all time. Deitch. They've just well, got to keep doing what they were doing, Mark. I, I mean, I don't like the way they're just popping it about. Why stop playing it in there and putting them under pressure? I mean, that's the one thing. When they start to believe they can pass it about, no. They've done all right the way they've been playing. Carry on doing it. That's better. Power behind Blackmore. Davis! It's a goal for Morris! It's a goal for Andy Morris and Chesterfield! In the ninth minute of the second half. He won't get an easier one, but he'll never get one that will get attention like this. Well, they're suddenly lengthening it, like they should have been doing. Howard does brilliantly against Blackmore. Look at Davis, I want it. He can't quite get there. Roberts makes it. Well, that's a great save. If ever a goalkeeper needed a bit of luck, it's there, because that's a fantastic save. But does Andy Morris care? No, he does not. Not one little bit. Won't be the best goal he's ever scored. I'll tell you what, it'll be the most memorable. So here's Hignett. Ravanelli, the team from Division 2, lead at Old Trafford in the FA Cup semi-final. Against the ten men of Middlesbrough. And this is Jonathan Howard. Everyone in a blue shirt wanting the ball. They believe this is their day of destiny. Davis. Here's Perkins. Fleming comes out to try and close him down. Perkins looking to skip past him. It's a goal kick. Well, let's get a chance to catch break here. I think you can't believe it. You know what he wants that clock to say, man? 85, not 55. So one thing middles are having their favour. The 35 minutes. So there's a the goal. They passed it about a little bit. Middle of the park for a while, then lengthened it. Can I just make one point here, Andy? Clayton Blackmore already booked, and he couldn't be too robust with his challenge. But look at that. They get a little bit of luck. They've needed it. Who's to say they've not deserved it? I can't believe he's not emotional. I can't believe it. His ambition, Morris. Oh, it's Davis! And David Ellery has said that entanglement with Blackmore was accidental, otherwise Blackmore would have gone. Yeah, you've got to give Blackmore the, the benefit of the doubt. But Davis is through, and I think he takes this on his chest. He does. And then the tackle comes in. i tell you what, the yellow card would have come out. No one would have been surprised. It was reckless from Blackmore. He made no contact with the ball. And had it come out, that would have been nine men for Middlesbrough. Well, that's out. Now look at that. There's no doubt Middlesbrough have dominated in attempts at goal, but look at that. The one on target. And how, well, how vital that might prove. Brian Robson, virtually on home soil here at Old Trafford. He brought the FA Cup back here three times as captain of Manchester United. But his team are in the toils. It's the Chesterfield fans who are singing, we're going to Wembley. Davis, who's looked 
a class act. He's looked a player. I think all three of them up front, man. I said it right at the beginning. They all showed at some time or other that they had what it takes to trouble the back four of Middlesbrough. And when it's been in that top third for Chesterfield, they've all looked a threat. Howard, Davies and Morris all looked a threat in various ways. But now they look Middlesbrough to Ravanelli and Janino to get them out of this mess. Well, what Chesterfield want to be doing is when they get it, to get, get it forward to that front three and say, go on, keep it up there as long as you can. Here comes Mercer. I look around though, Martin, you look for leaders at times like this. And you look around the red shots, I mean, Nigel Pearson not there. I'm not so sure there's a genuine leader out there. Someone who's going to take his team by the scruff of the neck. He's going to slap a few around the head a bit and say, come on, don't you realise what's at stake here? Because that's what's needed there. Hewitt. That's what's needed from Middlesbrough. Janino working back. Musto as well. Hewitt hasn't given it up, stroking it forward. And the touch from Festa takes it out. Another of the men brought to Middlesbrough for seven-figure sums. But money doesn't buy you everything in football. Well, no matter what level of football you play, you earn the right to play. It's as simple as that. Whether you cost seven million or whether you a free transfer, that many of John Duncan's players are. You've got to earn the right at any level, particularly in this, I think, always will be and always has been the greatest club, cup competition in the world. Ravanelli twisting it back to Janino. Great stop by Hewitt and Morris. Can he hold off Festa? Still Morris. This terrific play brought down. David Ellery thinks and gives Chesterfield the penalty kick. And I was talking to John Duncan an hour before the kickoff. He says we haven't got a penalty taken. Well, they have now. He's shouting Deitch, I think. He's shouting to the captain. They're all looking at each other. Come on, who wants it, lads? They're looking around. Someone step up. Put your foot through it. Now, this is the incident. First day, muscles out. Keeper goes to ground. I think the goalkeeper's unlucky, I have to say. I think the big lad earned the penalty. Well, let me tell you, Tom Curtis scored against Forrest from the penalty spot to win the fifth-round tie, but he's missed two since then. Can he pass the responsibility to the captain? Well, if you're not sure, lad, the only ones I can offer that. Just smash it. Sean Dyche. He smashed it all right. Chesterfield lead. Middlesbrough by two goals to nil. Well, that was an amazing scene, Mark, when we were watching that replay. Every player was looking around thinking, who's going to take it? John Duncan says, Dyche, you're the captain. You've got the armband on. This is what I would have done. If the goalkeeper does it, you don't know where it's going, then the goal is not going to watch chance of those. Hit it as hard as you can, back of the ball, down the middle. Takes a brave goalkeeper to stand still. It takes a brave man to step up and take that penalty. You talk about lack of leadership for Middlesbrough. Chesterfield had leadership. Sean Dyche, who hadn't scored a goal for Chesterfield for the best part of four years, has drilled the penalty that's given Chesterfield the sight of Wembley now. But what about Andy Morris's composure to go on and on and take on the goalkeeper? Ah, he earned it. I said that, I thought it may have been a little bit of a harsh decision. But first and foremost, he had to muscle out an international centre-back. He did that quite convincingly. Festa was left floundering. Simple as that. But I think he got a little bit of luck. Again, said at the top, big decisions need to go their way. That was another huge decision that went Chesterfield's way. So Middlesbrough, in simple terms, need two goals in less than half an hour, even to take it to extra time, and they've got to try and do that with ten men. Chesterfield holds all the aces. You just feel that Alan Moore's got to come on, Matt, sooner rather than later. I can't believe that, you know, if he doesn't get him on as quickly as possible. Mercer, 
sure-handed. Middlesbrough are short-handed. Well, you couldn't have, really, greater extremes of emotion. This isn't a dream, Mark. This is in the realms of fantasy. I have to say, if you're a Chesterfield support, unbelievable. Unbelievable. But this has been an extraordinary year in this glorious competition. Some creative play, and that will do for Chesterfield in these circumstances. Well, they're down Middlesbrough, but they're not out. This game is, I don't believe it's beyond them. They've got to work extremely hard, they've got a, a belief, it's certainly not beyond them, though. Emerson and Blackmore for the chance to pull one back. It's not beyond them, even less so now. So important for Middlesbrough to get the goal back. Great run from Blackmore, who goes really untracked for about the first time in the match. Somebody goes to sleep. Emerson's ball's a super one. Look at this. Very strong side, but he plays a great ball in. That's great delivery. And Ravenelli just muscles his way in. He knows any touch on this, and I'm going to score. And that's what he gets. Not the most convincing of touches, but a most important one. Game well, on. 28 goals this season. 14 of them have come in cup ties. This is some semi-final. <laughs> the mood has changed on the far side. Love it. Vickers. How will Chesterfield react? Blackmore. This is Robbie Muster. Ravenelli wants it. No wonder they give it to him. A bit of ball to him, Martin. The, the ball must have played back to him. He played it too near him, too much under his feet. If he'd have just played it a yard in front of him. Then he could have just stepped on to look, he just plays it straight back to him. He has to touch it. And that gave the defenders an opportunity to get the block in. He'd like to have hit that first time, Ravenelli. Morris. The onus on Chesterfield to keep Middlesbrough occupied and not to just retreat. And Dennis is doing just that. done by Williams but Hewitt wanted a way out and he got it from Dutch but <laughs> he just found Jules well the Ravenelli goal rattling Chesterfield but they're trying to produce a positive response to having their two goal lead cut in half Jules. One thing about John Duncan's team, they're very self-motivated. There's not a soft touch amongst them. And I know they're the most gifted 11 players that have come out for an FA Cup semi-final. So they're not going to be second best in attitude to anybody. But it's a test of that attitude now. Ravanelli draws Dyche out of the centre and plays a brilliant pass for Janino and Mercer is required again and doesn't fail Chesterfield. Well, the quality of that move was first class. The fit of the players we talked about them having. Great skill from Ravanelli. What a wonderful run from the little Brazilian. If he could have lifted that and got the over Mercer, who did ever so well, and Musto was right in the middle of goal, ready to tap it in.
Davis could dart in behind. Fester here who showed the good powers of recovery. Sunderland have got one back. Paul Stewart against one of his former clubs. Sunderland one, Liverpool two. Fowler and McManaman, the two inseparables, that got the Liverpool goals. This is Davis. Stewart is there. And it comes for Howard. Can they get another one? Off the other side of the bar. Lanesman's flagging that. Lanesman has got the flag up. He's given the goal. Lanesman's given a goal. What is the referee giving? Or is he giving offside? This Lanesman was flagging and then ran away to the halfway line. What was going on there? Is someone offside? No. He's certainly not offside. Fleming's playing him on. Now, does this cross the line? The linesman said it did, it did, but it's not been given. Well, Alan Sheffield on this near side put the flag up and then took it down again and presumably agreed with what David Ellery did to restart the game. Well, I'm a long way away, Mark. My reading was the linesman signaled that's a goal and immediately was sprinting to the halfway line to take his position up for a restart. David Ellery, well, I'll be interested to know what he gave. I'm amazed. Didn't look to be anybody offside. Jules. Well, that was optimistic, he got two to his left. But certainly as Howard shot came down off the underside of the bar, the flag was up. So we've got to look at it again. Well, this is it, Mark. As that's played in, you can see he's not offside. The flag's down. You see the linesman at the top of the screen. Flag, the referee, what is he doing blowing? Amazing. I can't... David Ellery was in a position there where he might have given an offside verdict. Why would he if he's not? <laughs> well, referees have done that before. Oh, they have, I admittedly. Well, that's a big, big decision again, isn't it? And this time it hasn't gone Chesterfield's way. And here's Janinho. It's Sean Dyche, the skipper, and Janina looks to push it past him. Well, is he in the box or not? It's half block. I think both penalties were kind. Kind to the attacker and unkind to the defender. The goalkeeper and Dyche. I think they're a little unlucky that penalties have been given against them. It's Craig Hignett to take it. And Middlesbrough, who looked down and out, 2-0 down, are back at 2-2. Two -two. And they've done it with 10 men. Well, it's not the best penalty I've seen, but it's in the net. And as far as Craig Hignett's concerned, that's the most important thing. Goalkeeper goes the right way. And I think it's because it's near to him. Actually, it goes under his body. Look at that. It goes under his body. Had that been a couple of feet away from him, he'd have saved that. Just didn't get down quick enough. He's a little unlucky, the goalkeeper. Well, what a five minutes that is, Martin, in the context of the match. A disallowed goal. Well, it certainly looked a disallowed goal to me. What? Well, no doubt we'll find out later that might have taken Chesterfield to Wembley. And within two minutes or so, Middlesbrough are level. Was the first contact outside the area? Was it obstruction rather than an infringement that would lead to a penalty? It's in the record books now. You can see what Sean Dyche was saying. The flyer who scored the penalty for Chesterfield conceded the equaliser. Oh, the penalty that led to the equaliser for Middlesbrough. It's, even by the standards of the FA Cup, simply amazing at Old Trafford this afternoon. Yes, there's like many semi-finals I've seen, Martin, dull, uninteresting, <laughs> boring. It's been all of those things and more.
Taking it again. It's interesting that Hignett took the penalty and not Ravanelli. Who has wasted a couple this season, but usually picks up the ball and plants it on the spot. Goodness me. Well, here's Emerson. What character from Middlesbrough. I'm sure a lot of the neutrals would have put themselves in the Chesterfield corner before this game and gone along with that, but you've got to hand it to the, the Middlesbrough team. The Premiership players refusing to accept that they were beaten here. Had, even regarding the fact that the ball uh, hit the bar and maybe or maybe not crossed the line and maybe or not should have been given a goal he's had two good chances that he hasn't taken Jonathan Howard Pignett there's uh, Janino throwing his weight about considerable it is as well isn't it look at that Well, we talked about David Ellery giving two penalties at Wembley in that Manchester United Chelsea final. He's given two here in the semi final at Old Trafford. And the man who won the sixth round for Chesterfield that was left out from the start today is coming on Chris Beaumont, replacing Paul Holland. Might be considering your man of the match at this yeah. point. <laughs> I'm You've I'm not definitely not. made up your mind. <laughs> I'd be surprised. But if you'd like to call us 0891111101. But please, as the story, as I'm sure it will, takes another twist or turn, let us know. This is Davis. And that was an awkward skip through to Ben Roberts, but he got plenty behind it. He not only hung on, used the ball quickly towards Ravanelli, lost it on to Janino. Yeah, the players are just wrapped up in this match. There's not a lot any manager can do to get instructions on. The game's just taken over. The pace of it, the tempo. It is a credit to everyone involved. Oh, look at Festa, he's just bombed 20 yards past. Janino, there he is. In. Fester, Ravanelli. Fester! Corner. A corner. Oh, As surely a corner. Well, he's got that one wrong, but it might give us a chance to. Uh, look at that. This is definitely a corner. You can see that, it takes a clear deflection. But maybe we can clear up when he actually blows his whistle. You can see there's no offside there. Definitely, he's not in line, he's not in a position to give that decision, in my opinion. He's pointing, who's he pointing against though? That's a strange one. Anything new on that, Mr. Talley, you saw? No, but I would say he had blown. We must concentrate on what is happening now. And here's Williams. It is Middlesbrough 2, Chesterfield 2. All the goals in the second half. Andy Morris and Sean Dyche from the penalty spot, putting Chesterfield 2-0 to the good. But Ravanelli starting the rescue drive for Middlesbrough. And then despite the Chesterfield complaints, Craig Hignett bringing them level from the penalty spot. 
after Daesh was adjudged to have committed an offence in the area and of sufficient merit to warrant a penalty on Janinho. Pignet. Fleming. Ravanelli. Here's Muster. Good challenge by Beaumont. Davis. Janinho. It's uh, gone down again. A shake of the head. From David Ellery. It's another old driving force from Fester. Lindsborough. Amazingly in a position now where they're showing their belief that they can win this. Janinho. Oh, what a tackle shot. Mark Jules. Oh. Morris. Trying to go around the outside of Vickers, who refused to be passed. Emerson. Janinho. There's a player to the right from Middlesbrough. It's Hignett. But while Janinho was looking up to see him, in went Chris Beaumont with the tackle. Can't thread it forward for Davis. Emerson. Been told to give it to Fleming. Playing instructions if he could understand them. Williams should head it away. We're ten minutes or so away from extra time, but don't bank on it. Janinho. Chesterfield have got a player hurt. And sporting. Uh, sporting, I'm not too sure many of his supporters feel that. <laughs> it gives us an opportunity, Mark, to look at those two penalty incidents, both of which I went, thought went very much in favour of the attack, he does well there. I'm not so sure the goalkeeper's a little unlucky there. And then we wondered whether it was inside the box or outside the initial challenge as Janino drives in. It's a close one to call. It looked as if the initial touch was outside, but from where David Eller is making the decision, well, he had difficulty in seeing that. Duncan and Kevin Randall and wait to see whether Chris Perkins responds to treatment. The thing that they're trying to do now is how to get the ball back to them after Curtis Fleming. The manager don't realise that what they're trying to do is just give them it back. That's exactly what they've done. Now they do. Etiquette observed. On with the show, and what a show at Old Trafford. Chelsea watching, absorbed, I'm sure, like the rest of us. They're already at Wembley. Ravanelli. Pignett. He's made space for the shot, and Mercer. What a save, son. What a save. Great play. Again, look at this, the way they flash in the move. Janinho's running ability, spots Hignett there, Ravinelli. Wasn't hurried. He was prepared to work the angle. Vickers. Got it back out again. Out comes Mercer. Well, he has made some really splendid saves. And given that he was a doubt, certainly earlier in the week, he's served the Chesterfield cause with great distinction. Made two great saves from Hignett. One of their more expensive signings. 
just under 100,000. trying to get away from Dutch. An example of how you can give players the ball when they are marked. The player is good enough to screen it and hold it as Ravanelli was. Pignett. Now Blackmore. has come up with a way of stopping Andy Morris being effective. Janino. Ravanelli. Emerson. Side master. Perkins is back on, but I think they're concerned about him down on the Chesterfield bench. He's going to have to come off. And defender Darren Carr is the only other outfield player available because Andy Leaning, the number two goalkeeper at Saltergate, named amongst the substitutes today because of the condition of Mercer and his recent injury. Chesterfield, the ball dropped on Ravanelli's right foot. Janino not quite dropping it on Hignett's head. Ravanelli. Janino. Emerson coming on to it. Howard trying to get it away. And, well, now Blackmore has been booked. And David Ellery. I have to say, would have surely shown a yellow card if Blackmore hadn't had an earlier one. Well, I'm glad you said that first, Mark, because that's a yellow card defence, isn't it? But nobody wants to see, particularly me, doesn't want to see players sent off in a game like this. But there's no doubt about it, that would have got the yellow card. It's as simple as that. Maybe another big decision in the game. And that one has gone Middlesbrough's way. Leads the corner. Now this would be a, a time to score. Well, I've had very little action up this part of the field since Ravinelli got Middlesbrough back into it. It's been all Middlesbrough who have dominated possession and territorially. Jamie Hewitt to take the corner. Janino <laughs> making sure he got there first and he was being uh, fouled as he did so. He was alert. He's got a great attitude to the game, that lad. He may be blessed with all the skill in the world, more than most, but what he's also got is a huge determination to work and do all the, the ugly things that people see in the game. There's been a lot of gossip in the game about the divisions in the Middlesbrough ranks, the haves and the have-nots, the foreigners and the home base players. But I tell you, there's been no division in the ranks in some of the uh, recent performances. They've played with great character. Uh, 08, 9, 1, double one, double one, oh, 1. Number for man of the match. The numbers on the scoreline are taking us towards extra time. Well, there's 
discuss that with one of the foreign traits that I totally disapprove of, indicating to the referee that he should produce a yellow card for a member of the opposition. Well, they wouldn't have been doing that a minute ago when it was Clayton Blackmore. <laughs> Got up and brandished an imaginary card at David Ellerith, who thought should have gone to Jonathan Howard. Emerson. Is it time for me to tell you that Liverpool have achieved a big win at Roker Park by two goals to one. Oh, I like that set up next Saturday. Brian Rock is having a quick look at his watch. <laughs> He'd rather be out there playing. And if uh, this was to go to a replay, he might find himself having to play at some point over the uh, rest of the season. Middlesbrough already with a very, uh, very congested end to the season. And if they take an extra game on May the 17th, they might not get it if Chesterfield play, play it well here, but Morris didn't do that. Two mains, that's all. I think he wanted to shoot initially. I saw Davies just peel off to the right. And then get caught in two minds between where they're shooting or playing the pass. There's some tired bodies out there now, Martin. Every one of the players on show has been playing from the first whistle, has put absolutely everything into it. Well, Chesterfield got lucky not once but twice. Easing it on for Davis. Fester. Deich. In a tower of strength for Chesterfield. Williams. Morris saying, give me one to leap for, and they've certainly done that. He knocked it back, but not quite into the right area. Pignett. Well, off. And another buccaneering burst is Fester. <laughs> Darren Carr, really, standing alongside Janino with Tower above him, but Janino did enough there to make Carr have to head it, head it behind for the corner. He did. Fest has done well, you know, Martin, in the last 20 minutes. When they for someone to come, he's come forward from the back. He's risked leaving gaps at the back to go and help up top. And this was corner in stoppage time. Morris making sure his arms are well away from that. Fleming. Chasing across. 90 minutes. It's had everything except a winning goal. Davis. Hounded by Mustard. Beaumont gets it to Morris. Oh, and it's behind Davis. He was pretty drained by the efforts. And we do go to extra time. A really wonderful game to this point. And it seemed that Chesterfield were going to Wembley the way the second half started when Andy Morris not only scored the opening goal of the semi-final, but then earned a penalty. Let's look back as the players regroup for the extra half an hour. Ben Roberts unlucky that he made the save from Davis, but Morris in the perfect place, 1-0 to Chesterfield. All this, of course, with Middlesbrough down to 10 men, Kinder sent off in the first half. Morris missed a cool in the circumstances. And then, as Andy Gray was saying, he feels Roberts was a bit unfortunate again there, but a penalty it was, John Duncan delighted, 
but then he had to sort out a penalty taker. Dyche, the captain, took on the responsibility and produced the goods. And Middlesbrough must have feared the worst. But Brian Robson has not only assembled an expensive team, he's assembled a brave team. Ravenelli. Hope revived. And Clayton Blackmore putting uh, in a splendid pass from the left. Then this incident. When the whistle had gone and uh, the linesman was flagging as though the ball had crossed the line, but the whistle had blown earlier. Another talking point of a major variety. Should it have been a penalty? Whether it should or whether it shouldn't is still a matter for debate. Dice on Janino, a penalty it was. And Hignett squeezed it under Mercer. I've been doing the talking, and he's been doing the looking as that's been going on. Any reason to change your mind on anything that you've said? Mark, I look around, and there are, there are a bunch, two teams who are absolutely dead on their feet at the moment. They're absolutely shattered. Middlesbrough, no surprise, because they've been a man short. There were two goals down. They've had to work their socks off. And there's no doubt that probably the Premiership side would have been the fitter side, so... There's no doubt in Chesterfield's players have probably worked harder in this 90 minutes than they've ever done. So there's two very tired sets of footballers out there. You get tired minds and tired bodies. You get mistakes. You get gifted players who can do something, might just win it. Think about Janino in particular. You know, but... You look back, and John Duncan will look back on this incident. And I still don't know what he's given, Mark. There's the shot. Now, there's no offside. You can see Curtis Fleming at the top of the screen playing everybody onside. Right, now, how on earth he's given offside when he's not even in a position to do it? Yeah, but he's in no position to do that. Then the linesman who has kept his flag down all through that move puts it up and signals a goal. Then the whistle goes again. Now, I still, for the life of me, don't see how David Ellery from that position, when he's not in line with the last defender who's cut his Fleming, can blow off. That's what he's done for offside, but no doubt Mr. Ellery will inform us. Well, when he's in charge of a major match, he's often the focus of attention. Well, which is a shame in many ways. Too many games are like that, I'm afraid. Big games. We end up talking about referees' decisions. But, a lot of football to be played. Robson, of course, though, Martin does have, what is it, Derek White and Alan Moore. Still two players that he can bring on if he needs to freshen things up. So 15 minutes each way, and if nothing decisive happens, it would be a replay at Hillsborough, where Middlesbrough are bound for, for the next assignment. That uh, FA Cup semi-final replay will take place on April the 22nd, should it be required. So Middlesbrough, who've uh, put out Chester, non-league Hensford. They won at Manchester City, they won at Derby. The replays haven't been the order of the day for either of these clubs so far in the competition. Suggests there's some sorting out to do as this extra 